Today, we are going to learn how to retrieve data from data views created in Aviva Data Hub and write them to PySpark data frames. We will do this by installing the Data Hub Python library, importing relevant packages, creating a Data Hub client and specifying what data to pull, writing a function to pull data from a data view and generate a Spark data frame, and finally, demonstrating simple and parallel data requests using the function. While we are using Databricks and Spark for this demonstration, this pattern can also be applied to any application with similar Python support for data ingress. Now, before we begin, there are some prerequisite steps that you will want to complete. For each of these steps, I have included relevant documentation in the description of this video. With that, let's get started. I will be starting from this workbook where I've outlined the steps we will be following. To communicate with Data Hub, we could use REST calls directly but it is more convenient to use our publicly available sample client library on GitHub. We can gain access to the library by pip installing it using the following commands. Next, we need to import relevant packages that will be used throughout this exercise. Now we generate a Data Hub client object, which will be how we interact with Data Hub. As you can see, it is referencing secrets using dbutils.secrets.get, which pulls secrets from the Azure Key Vault I've integrated with Databricks ahead of time. These include tenant ID, client ID, client secret, and lastly, namespace ID. I will also specify additional information, like the data view that we will be reading data from, along with the start index, end index, and interval of the data we want to retrieve. Using the Data Hub client, I will create a function called data view request that will be used to pull data from the specified data view page by page and put it into a PySpark data frame. In this function, we will start by retrieving the interpolated data using the data views .get data interpolated call, which takes the following parameters. Then we can use spark.read.json to convert the JSON string representation of the data page into a PySpark data frame. We will then repeat this process until we have processed all of the pages and finally return the resulting data frame. Let's put this function to use by passing the required parameters, printing out how many rows we retrieved along with showing the data frame. As we can see, it took about 43 seconds to execute this command and retrieve a month's worth of one minute interval data. But we can do even better if we take advantage of parallel execution. To do this, I'm going to start by setting the number of executors, which will be the same as what is used by default in the thread pool executor package. Now, I will split the time range between the start index and end index into a number of intervals equal to the number of executors. From here, I can take my list of intervals and convert them into a list of start indexes and a list of end indexes. This is where the multi-threading fun begins as I will create a thread pool executor named pool and run our custom function data view request for each start index and index pair we just generated and return a data frame. The last step is combining all the return data frames into a single data frame. To verify we are getting the same result as before, we print out the number of rows as well as part of the data frame. We can see that this was much faster than our simple approach, taking only about 18 seconds for the same data. It is worth noting that the speed of the data is also dependent on a variety of factors such as the amount of data, data view configuration, and the underlying data streams. If you would like to review any of the code covered in this video, you can find a link in the video description. That is all I have for you today, and thanks for watching. 